Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is gonna be a brand new aesthetic than what I usually do. So let's get into it. This is the first theme I have where it's not necessarily my style, but it is the style of someone close to me. March is my sister's birthday month and I thought it would be cool to theme it after her. She's a really big fan of pink and cherry blossoms, so that's the theme for this month. Throughout this video, I even use her washi tapes because they fit in with the theme. The main ones I'm going to use for these spreads are Japanese cherry blossom themed ones. For the cover page, I take my gold paint again after using it for the January spread and start painting some sketches. The entire scene is supposed to be a lake with a cherry blossom tree above it and a bunny. I wanted the gold paint on the cover to help tie together the cover with the gold foiled washi tapes I'm going to use later on. On the right side, there are also characters that I'm painting which directly translates to 3 and Moon, so it's just the characters for March. While waiting for the gold paint to dry, I take out my working cup and decide on colors for this month. To help stop the pink overload, I color the inside of the leaf raft I made for the bunny. To hide some of my jagged painting, I use my gold pen to outline the paint just like I did for the January spread. I take the lightest pink I have to outline the lake. To fill in the leaf raft, I had to know where the waterline was, so while coloring the lake, I colored the leaf too. The next step is to draw the flowers onto the tree. I draw the flowers first so you can see the color on them and not just the color of the tree. I didn't really have a plan for where the flowers would go, so I just tried putting them in clumps and on the crossroads of the branches. While drawing flowers, I also made tiny circles and petals falling from the tree. That's why I drew the bunny standing up. I colored them in with a slightly darker pink than the lake, but I didn't color them completely. For the branches, I held my brown marker really far from the nib and started going over my sketch. With a lack of control from holding it so far away, it gives the branches a more natural look. After that, I write March in the circle really thin and italicized. Then I found another pen to outline the circle. Something felt missing in the upper right hand corner and it was really looking empty. So on a whim, I started covering one corner of the circle with my white pen. I cut a petal shape and used that as a stencil for a nicer looking big flower. Then I freehand another small flower right beside it. I traced both flowers and added lines in the middle and the edges. Like the smaller flowers, I added the color from just the middle. With that, I start with the monthlies. I used the same font as the characters on the cover to trace out March on the side. I trace it with a darker pink, then coloring it in with a lighter pink. Using a dusty pink color, I make the grid for the days of the month. To fill in the empty space, I make more flowers, color them in, and make the branches. I thought that was the only way I could incorporate the cherry blossom theme while also giving myself enough space to write, because there's 5 weeks in March. For the week label, I look through my washi tape collection for a pink tape that would match the rest of the design. Then I write them in with the brown pen I used for the flowers. I dab those with a tissue to help pick up excess ink because the washi tapes don't take ink very well. It's the same grid width as my February monthly, where the weekends are wider than the weekdays. So I just have to adjust a little bit when adding the dates. This month's monthly is relatively not as designed as my previous monthlies. Well, probably because it's a really big grid because of the five weeks, and also probably because my classes are going to be starting, so I need all the space I could get. At this point, I pretty much knew what I wanted for my weeklies. My classes are starting in the first week of March, so I knew that I wanted to have my vertical time spreads again. For those of you guys who have seen my planner videos, you know that I love using this setup for when classes start. It's basically just all the times listed down in a vertical column, and then you just write your plans on when you're planning to do that on the time. I'm not sure if I made any sense. But basically, I begin by writing down the times for each day, most of the columns have the same width except for the Sunday one, which is usually a rest day for me anyway. The time sked starts at 8am and makes its way to 12am with two rows for each hour. So I have classes that start on like 8.30, some classes start at like 11.30, so I need to make that clear in what I have. Classes are also 
most of them at least, are an hour and 30 minutes long. So having just one row for every hour would be a bit hard, especially when you have two classes right after the other. To make the heading, I use a really thin petal washi to make the divider, then make a small box on the left side for notes and probably the shows I want to watch. Then the last touch is the day labels which I wrote in a bright pink pen. I basically repeat the same order of operations for the next four pages, so I just want to give a little life update. So yeah, I've been planning for my classes and really for the semester ahead of me. I got a new set of class notebooks and surprisingly, I got all my subjects without having to beg professors to add me to their class. I'm not sure if any of you know the system that I'm in right now, but it's basically you show up in the first day of class, you go up to the professor and just ask them, hey, can I have prerog, which is basically a teacher's prerogative, where, yeah, you're basically begging them. Be like, hey, please let me into your class. I need units please let me join and then it's always kind of embarrassing especially when it's face to face but now it's extra hard because it's emails you have to find the professor's email email them and then wait for a response which i'm not sure how long that usually takes i did that last semester and i managed to get i think two or three classes from that so yeah which is a complete surprise for me this semester because I got all my classes without having to beg them. So I have 18 units of subjects, which seems like a lot because the current minimum is 12. Normal load for face-to-face -face classes is 15, but I've been taking 18 units ever since I started as a non-major. I took 18 units last semester and I think I've handled it pretty well. So this semester is going to be very varied in terms of my subjects. I'm taking the next level of Japanese class. I was taking B last semester, so I took 10. Yeah, like Japanese 10, I'm taking Japanese 11. And then there's Geography, Geography 1, Marine Science 1, English 11, which is basically a literature class if I understand that correctly, MUL 13, which is like world music cultures, and then Math 10. It makes me kind of nervous that I haven't had math in like two years. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna be able to handle Math 10. I think I handled the last math I passed pretty well, so I hope I do well in this one. I'm doing all of this just so I can up finally apply for a course and finally get to studying something that leads to a graduation. For now, it just feels like I'm back in high school just taking random subjects. Well, specifically more of senior high school, because yeah, I would say my curriculum was very varied that time and I didn't exactly know what I was studying for. Well, same thing for now. So yeah, I'll try to keep you guys updated through this tiny chat time in my plan with me's. And we go back to the weeklies. To finish out my weekly spreads, I add the tiny corner calendar that I had in my last weekly. So it's the same time consuming process of making the calendar 5 times and then using a marker to highlight the week it's on. So it'll also help me figure out the days when I'm actually planning out my schedule. I got a glue stick to help stick down the tapes that don't have good adhesive because they kept peeling off. I write the date on top of each day just to help me later on for when I need them for reference. To tie in the cherry blossom theme on the page and not just fully pink, I make the same falling flower petals that I did for the cover. But this time, more petals and flowers were falling the more you turned the page, which would also give me a sense of moving time. Nearing the end, I even made very small, full flowers that were also falling. And that's my weeklies. Next are my habit trackers. Because my habit trackers aren't really that format dependent, I wanted to try another design for this month. I made bars of numbers for each habit I wanted to track, which at this point is still 12 different things. So I made 6 on one side and mirrored it on the other side. Like the flowers, I made the numbers inside the dusty pink color while the boxes in it were brown. After making the numbers, I just had to make the grid lines. For the design on the right side, I put the widest of the cherry blossom washi tape we had. Then for the title to tie in the look, I just wrote the same tall and thin letters I used for the cover and just a stripe of washi across both of them, like how I usually do with my notes. To save me from drawing more of the falling flowers, I just used some stickers to just add some extra interest. For the left side, I made another one of those branches with the flowers that you've seen me make twice before. 
Now on to the exercise tracker. I start as usual by writing down the days of the month and labels for the trackers. I like the boxed off look I made last month because it really gives me the space to design the page without really interfering with the tracker. Like the habit tracker, I wrote the numbers with a pink pen and made the box with the brown pen. For the exercise tracker, I added the key on the side like I usually do. I still kept the same colors I've been using since I started making this tracker, so I don't really get confused with what color is what. The titles were made like the habit tracker titles with the tall and thin lettering that matches the cover page. This was the time when I finally found the other stickers I wanted to use, so I sorted through them a bit before actually using them. To match the previous spread, I take a tape of the same width as the one I used with the habit tracker and made that stripe around the top. Mirroring my February trackers, I also added a wide washi onto the right side to take up space because I don't have a key there. After quickly filling in my exercise key, I start decorating. I use a sticker to cover up the portion of the tape I used that clashed with the color scheme. There was this random black flower on the tape that didn't really work well, so, you know, cover it up with a sticker. To take up space on the other side, I used different shades of pink tapes to make stripes under the exercise key. I also used a little bit of the cherry blossom printed washi tape to also add to that. I put a sticker over the tapes and another one on the empty space. Now, quick jump to the wallpaper for the month. I used a photo of Mount Fuji with a shot of the water and cherry blossoms. I decided to mix that with the monochrome flat landscape style that I use for making wallpapers. I tried using the width tools to give the branches the variation that it needed. So I'm using the one where it's like the triangle so that it's like heavier at the base than thinner at the edges. I make the basic cherry blossom shape using what I can draw on my trackpad and use the pathfinder tools to copy paste them and connect them. So I don't have to place and resize the flowers individually, I decided to make it into a scatter brush. It took a bit of tweaking but eventually it got there. I used the same scatter brush technique for the falling petals. So I had to just put it on random, adjust it a little bit so that it would really fit well with how I wanted it to look. Originally, I made a sloping waterline like the one in my cover, but then I realized that it was just supposed to be flat. I hand drew the mountain using the brush tool instead of the shape tool, so it just had a more organic shape instead of like a flat triangle. I really wanted to go with a monochromatic design with all the pinks, but I had to change the sky color. It was a bit too much and I wanted it to look a little bit more alive, so I made it more like a sunrise with a gradient so you could actually see the mountain and the separation of the water. There's also a small group of buildings around the base of the mountain, so I just added some random boxes there. Of course, the water is going to have a reflection of the mountain, so what I did is I just got the mountain and the blue base village that I made out of squares and copy pasted it, flipped it around vertically, and then just lowered down the opacity so it doesn't look as clear as the original mountain and village. I was working on another addition to the tree which were supposed to be like flower clumps which was more dense than the ones I've already put because I was worried that the tree might look really bare. But it looked really messy so I just scrapped that idea. For the month calendar, I just took a cute rounded font to match the pink theme of the wallpaper. So here's my final wallpaper and threads. I hope you guys liked this video, it was kind of weird venturing out of my own aesthetic for this month, but I hope it was still cool. What do you guys think of the spreads? Any suggestions for monthly themes? Leave them in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos from me, then hit the subscribe button and the bell to know when a new video is out. I try to upload every week, Monday nights at 8. I guess that's all for this video. Bye guys!